double A batteries. That is so cool. In my last video, we talked about my favorite camcorders, and the typical sensor size for a camcorder is around 1 over 2.3 inches. Today, we're going to compare all cameras that have 1 over 2.3 inches. We're going to compare camcorders with bridge cameras and also some little pocket cameras to see how they compare with a bigger giant bridge cameras and camcorders. Now, those of you who saw the word bridge camera in the title and have a 1 inch sensor bridge camera, please try and refrain yourself from bragging about your camera under this video. That's like somebody from a Mustang group going over to a Ford Focus group and saying, My car is better than yours. Come on, grow up. Go back to your AARP support meetings. Let's talk about these things because these are fun. These are tiny little sensors that are going to blow your mind how good they really are. You can eke out some really cool stuff from tiny little sensors. Believe it or not, this giant camera has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. Wow. All right, let's start. The cameras I will be featuring today in the camcorder world, the Canon Vixia G70, the Sony AX43, the Panasonic VX981, and the little tiny Sony CX405. In the bridge camera world, we have the Canon PowerShot SX70HS $700, the Panasonic Lumix FC300 $600. We have a Kodak AZ901 Pix Pro $450, and a little tiny Kodak Pix Pro 250 this is only $150, believe it or not, $150 for a bridge camera. How? Well, anyway, we'll see. And a big giant Nikon P1000, and that's also the price of the camera. It's $1,000. All right, and then also we're going to throw in, just for the hell of it, two little tiny compact pocket cameras, which also have a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, a Panasonic Lumix ZS80, and a little tiny Sony HX99. How do they compare with these bigger cameras? Even though I showed you in the last video that it was possible to get blurry backgrounds with a camcorder, you're not going to get that in normal everyday life situations, filming people, especially indoors. It'll work with small objects, but not really people. It is possible, but you have to have the camera 40 feet back from the person and the background needs to be over like a mile behind that. Even though it's possible to get blurry backgrounds with 1 over 2.3 inch sensors, that's not the reason to get these cameras. All right, let's just jump right into it. Since bridge cameras are basically big giant zoom lenses, lenses with a camera attached on the back and they're used mainly for wildlife and bird photography and video. Let's go outside and put a few fake birds about a hundred feet away and then I'll put a second bird closer to us so we can see how sharp each camera is. Then we'll go inside and do an interview style setup to see how well each camera can film a person. All right so let's head outside. Let's start with the Sony AX43. This is not my favorite camcorder but here we go. This is the optical zoom on the AX43 and this is as far as it goes. If you use the digital zoom to go further, this is what you get. It's kind of shaky, the stabilization is not that great. All right, bird on car zoom. Camcorders have smoother zooms. This is actually a 1 over 2.5 inch sensor, which is a little smaller, but it's still acceptable. And as we saw in the last video, autofocus is a hit or miss with this camera. Let's go inside. Not bad. Colors are pretty good but wait till you see these other ones. All right, now the little tiny CX405. This does not have a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. It's a teeny tiny 1 over 5.8 inch sensor, but I want to include it just for fun. Look how smooth the zoom is. Really, really smooth. And pretty good reach for a tiny little cheap $200 camcorder and great stabilization. All right, let's zoom in here. Smooth zoom, not bad. And the color is pretty darn good for such a tiny sensor. Okay, let's go indoors. If you have enough light, it can look pretty decent. It's a little grainy, but I think many people would be okay with this. Okay, back to the 1 over 2.3 inch cameras. Let's jump to a bridge camera, starting with the Lumix FZ300. Not the smoothest zoom. Like I said, bridge cameras don't have the smoothest zooms. But once you get there, the image is pretty good. This is as far as it goes. Okay, this is where it starts to get fun. Check this out. Looks great. And if you think that looks good, check this out. Wow, look at those colors. Perfect skin colors, perfect smooth skin. What a pleasing symphony for the eyes. And this is a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. Everything I'm showing you today is straight out of the camera and nothing's been touched up. Okay, let's compare that to the hefty Canon G70 camcorder, which also has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. Notice the super smooth zoom. Like I said, camcorders have a smoother zoom. But this is as far as the G70 goes. And the image quality, eh. All right, bird on car zoom. Not bad, but it has kind of a camcorder look. Mm, let's go indoors. Now, this is nice. This has kind of a professional look. 
Really nice, really nice. I like it. All right, so let's compare that big camcorder with this little tiny pocket camera that also has a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, the Sony HX99. Okay, the zoom is kind of shaky, no surprise, but once it gets there, it goes even further and has a cleaner, better image than the G70. And if you zoom in further with digital, this is where it, of course, starts to fall apart. But the color is still pretty good. Okay, you're in for a treat here. Shaky zoom, but wait, wait, wait. Bam, look at that. This is not a bridge camera. This is a tiny pocket camera. Indoors in low light, it's not as slick as the G70. So this camera does better in brighter daylight. All right, speaking of cheap little cameras, let's try this cheap little $150 Kodak Pix Pro 255. This is only $150 and the Kodak cameras are only 1080. Shaky as hell, but when you get there, it's not that bad. Whoa, for a $150 camera, this is kind of cool. And what's interesting is that, look at it, it's not even grainy. And the colors are quite impressive for basically a cheap toy camera. All right, let's check out the bigger brother, the $450 Kodak PixPro AZ901. Shaky zoom, of course, but quite surprising when you arrive at your destination. It has a nice, pleasant look. The way the highlights bloom, it's so friendly looking. All right, check this out. Bumpy ride, lots of boulders and rocks, but look at that. Let's back up a tiny bit and have a look. All right, let's go inside. Whoa, what? This was a surprise. The colors are really fun to look at. The focus is kind of drunk, but it only wobbles a little bit. You know, for kind of a cheap, almost toy-like camera, it has kind of a mesmerizing quality. I can't stop looking at it for some reason. Maybe it's the famous Kodak colors. I just love this. All right, let's go to a more serious, famous Canon SX70 HS bridge camera. Also with a 1 over 2.38 sensor. All right, this is with a digital zoom. It has kind of a camcorder look. All right, let's go to the car and zoom in here. Yeah, this looks a little bit better because the lighting's different. With the digital zoom, you can go in a little bit further, but not much before it starts breaking apart. Let's back up a bit. There, that's about right. This looks a little better than the AX43. All right, let's go inside. Great colors, no blurry backgrounds with this camera. 5.6 is the best you're gonna get. But I like the colors. They're really similar to the Lumix FZ300 bridge camera. All right, let's whip out my favorite little camcorder, the Panasonic VX981. Look at that smooth zoom. Whoa, <laughs> okay, let's back up a bit. I had the digital on. All right, this is as far as the optical zoom goes, and that's pretty good. All right, here's the closer bird. Smooth zoom, because it's a camcorder. Wow, look at that. I love this camcorder. You can see why this is my favorite camcorder. And this is all just auto. I don't do anything to it. This is right out of the camera. I haven't touched it. I did nothing manual. This camera is so easy to use. All right, let's try another little pocket camera with a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, the Lumix ZS80. Shaky zoom, of course. All right, now that looks like a cell phone shot, but check this out. Wow. If you have enough light, you can get some really good stuff with a little compact pocket camera. Look at that. And this is just a little one over 2.3 inch sensor. I love it. All right, let's go inside. Not bad for a pocket camera. Nice colors, I love it. These little Panasonic one over 2.3 inch sensors have really nice colors. All right, the big, giant, heavy, expensive monster, the Nikon P1000. How good is this camera? All right, here we go. Zooming in, and there we are. That's quite a zoom. When you zoom this much, it gets wobbly. Let's back up to a normal distance here. And there you go. It does shoot 4K, which was ahead of its time in 2010. Zoom is actually pretty smooth compared to other bridge cameras. But you definitely need a tripod and you cannot touch it or it'll wiggle like crazy. Wow, look how close you can get with this thing. It's like a telescope. This is definitely the king of zooms. Nikon says this camera has a dual detect optical vibration reduction system. Hmm. So this camera might be more for pictures, not video. To get it to not shake as much, you need to stabilize the front of the lens too and not be touching it at all. It's Mr. Wobbly. What makes this camera famous is the lens. Not the camera, the lens. But one thing the camera does have going for it is colors. Let's go inside. The colors are surprisingly good. Yay, Nikon. 
Autofocus is searching around a bit like a fidgety child. You know, I love the look, but you don't need this monster for a shot like this. You can use a normal Nikon. Speaking of good colors, this camera is some of the truest colors of any camera in my other low light indoor set. And the autofocus stayed on my face the whole time. I am impressed. But again, you don't need this behemoth for shots like this. All right, so we talked about the camcorders in my last video. Let's sum up my feelings about some of these other cameras here. Let's start with the Canon SX70 HS bridge camera. It has amazing skin tones, out of the box, better colors than the G70 camcorder, good face tracking autofocus, but a little more grainy noise than a G70 camcorder. As with any Canon camera, 4K is definitely better than 1080. Big difference. 1080 makes you think your eyes are going bad, but it has nice colors and the body is nice and small like an APS-C camera. I love the way this camera feels in my hand. Canon really has the ergonomics down. I love the way they feel. All right, the Lumix FZ300 bridge camera. The images and video look amazing. Great color, amazing resolution for a tiny sensor. Same exact Lumix buttons and menu you're used to so you instantly know how to use it. Face tracking focus is actually pretty darn good. Panasonic did a great job with their bridge cameras. All right, the Kodak cameras. As you saw, these things have a great, bright, colorful, happy look. The famous Kodak colors. The footage is pretty low res. It's only 1080, but I don't care. It looks like I'm watching old Technicolor movies from the 50s. I just love the look. I'm mesmerized by it. The menu buttons take some time getting used to, but once you do it a few times, you can do stuff pretty quick. Long-term photographers will hate these. They're just not set up like normal cameras. There's no buttons for shutter speed, f-stop, ISO or white balance. But for some reason, these cameras are just plain fun to use. They feel great in your hands. They have beautiful feel good on off sounds. And the look of the pictures and videos is like a color orgasm. They're good for outdoors and brightly lit areas, but not in low light. But outdoors, they're fun. And the big giant Nikon <laughs> Coolpix P1000. Oh my God, this is an anvil. What a dinosaur this thing is. Why does this giant monster have a tiny sensor? It's so it can zoom even further. The smaller the sensor is, the more it crops in, which gives you more of a zoom. So that's why it can have like this 3000 millimeter equivalent zoom here. You can get some good stuff with it, but it's just way too big and clunky and heavy. And it's got really old tech from, from 2010. It has no touch screen. And the menu is more basic than even a cheap pocket camera. It has gray color, not fantastic in low light. $1,000, <laughs> you're pretty much paying for the lens. But there's an old outdated camera attached to it. So not for me. All right. Now we get to my favorite little cameras. Oh my God, weren't you surprised with these? How these two little guys held up their own against these giant things. The Sony HX99 pocket camera. It has a viewfinder, it has a flip up screen so you can vlog with it. It has the famous Sony Eye autofocus. It can do 120 frames per second. It's smaller than a RX100. This is tiny, this is our tiny camera. And I'm amazed, this thing is sharp. It's Sony, it's just good. Uh, and the Lumix ZS80, I love this camera. It has a viewfinder, it has a flip up screen so you can vlog with it. This is a great pocket camera, all purpose. I love it. The ISO only goes to 3200, so it needs a lot of light, but the flip up screen and the viewfinder, it has all the Lumix dials and buttons and the menu that you're used to. I love this camera and the colors, the skin colors are amazing with this thing. As you know, I love little tiny things. So anything I can fit in my pocket, I love. That's why I'm not a bridge camera person, but next week we're going to have one inch cameras. We're gonna compare all kinds of one inch cameras. We're gonna compare pocket cameras, bridge cameras, and camcorders, and see how the one inch cameras compare. And this is where you middle-aged men with one inch bridge cameras can brag and talk about how great your camera is and how it's the greatest thing in the world, great. All right, so, um, there you go. I, I uh, Out of these ones here, which ones do I love? Out of all of these, my favorite ones personally are the Panasonic VX981 camcorder and the Panasonic Lumix ZS80. And runner up for that would be the little tiny HX99 pocket camera. These ones, are my favorites because they're so small and they're so portable and they're fun to use and they hold their own against these bigger cameras. These things do good stuff. 
I'm not saying anything like technically they're they're good and all that. They're just big and clunky and it's not my thing. Um, but each person has their own thing. So next week we're going to get into one inch cameras and uh, yeah, we're going to have fun with those. So I'll see you in the next week. Until then, bye bye. He, um, he said he didn't want this, right? <laughs> I'm going to give it away. <laughs> he said he didn't want it. The, the Nikon P1000. He said he hates it. So I, I'm going to give it away. <laughs> uh, uh, MarcusPix.GiveawayAnswer.com. I'm going to put on there real quick. Yeah, I won't. Don't tell anybody. Um, hurry up. Hurry up. MarcusPix.GiveawayAnswer.com. <laughs> <laughs> Batteries, that is so cool.